Um, hello, everyone. Um, so this presentation is uh, a short uh, presentation that is focusing on the different types of uh, brain edema. Uh, let's start by understanding the concept of uh, blood-brain barrier. Uh, blood-brain barrier is actually an anatomic and a physiologic barrier uh, within the central nervous system uh, that is composed uh, within the wall and the surroundings of the uh, capillaries within the brain. The endothelium of the brain is uh, lined with uh, an underlying basement membrane and is uh, joined with tight junctions. Surrounding uh, this uh, is uh, a layer of pericytes, and then the end feet or the footsteps of the astrocytes. This composes the anatomic structure of the blood-brain barrier, and the um, ATP-dependent uh, sodium-potassium exchange across the membrane and the tight junctions, as well as between the endothelium and the astrocyte end feet, composes the physiological part of the blood-brain barrier. In cases of uh, brain edema, there is disruption of this blood-brain barrier or failure of the ATP um, pump, which results in leakage of fluid from the intravascular spaces into the extravascular spaces, and that composes brain edema. Now, there are four main types of brain edema, the cytotoxic edema, the vasogenic edema, the transependymal edema, and the hydrostatic edema. And there are um, a bunch of different causes of uh, and etiologies for uh, this, uh, these processes, which vary from neoplastic to infectious to traumatic to degenerative uh, uh, and ischemic uh, etiologies. Um, these types of edemas may occur uh, uh, in, uh, uh, as, as each one individually, but uh, an overlap between different types of edema may also happen. Uh, differentiating these types and identifying what is the dominant type in the pathology will help in fine-tuning the diagnosis and subsequently leads to better uh, patient judgment. Edema in general and imaging would appear as a low attenuation or hypodense on CT with low signal intensity on T1 and high signal intensity on T2. It may or may not show a restricted diffusion as diffusion-weighted images and ADC maps will help differentiating the two main types of edema, the cytotoxic and the vasogenic edema. Cytotoxic would be high signal intensity on diffusion with low signal intensity on ADC map, while vasogenic will appear both, will appear hyper-intense in both uh, uh, images, the diffusion-weighted and the ADC maps. When we assess the brain edema, we also assess its effect on the surrounding parenchyma, including the effacement of the sulci, the compression of the brain, surrounding brain parenchyma, the compression of the ventricular system, and in case of, uh, in case of uh, uh, contrast uh, administration, we assess the uh, degree of enhancement within this edema to identify underlying pathology. Let's start with cytotoxic edema. It is an intracellular edema, meaning as the ATP pump fails uh, due to hypoxemia, for instance, there will be a rapid accumulation of sodium within the cells. The ATP pump regulates the sodium calcium influx and efflux from within and outside the, 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 the cells across the cellular membrane. Failure of the pump results in overall accumulation of intracellular sodium, which increases the intracellular osmolality and subsequently results in influx of water from the interstitium into the intracellular space, trying to dilute this sodium and brings back osmotic equilibrium. 
This will result in activation of phospholipase and the release of uh, arachidonic acid with subsequent release of the oxygen-driven free radicals and secondary infarction. This is an acute process. It is usually irreversible, results in cellular um, uh, swelling and then rupture, which is known as apoptosis. And secondary, and usually secondary, is usually secondary to ischemia. It involves both gray and white matter. These are different examples. It can, it, it, it illustrates the well-defined arterial infarction with the low attenuation density involving the gray and the white matter, the gray and the white matter involving the basal ganglia as gray and the internal capsule and the external capsule as white matter as well as the cortex and subcortical white matter. This is on CT demonstrating the mass effect as uh, evidenced by the effacement of the sulci and the compression of the adjacent parenchyma. On diffusion, it shows restricted diffusion as high signal intensity with corresponding low signal intensity on the ABC map. This is the classic example of cytotoxic edema, which usually occurs in cases of ischemia and infarction. The second type is vasogenic edema, and it is extracellular. In vasogenic edema, there is a break of the normal function and physiology of the blood-brain barrier, resulting in increased permeability and dilatation of the brain capillaries with um, leak of um, the uh, uh, blood plasma from the intravascular to the extravascular space. So there's leak of uh, albumin and plasma into the brain parenchyma, which usually occurs surrounding an inciting lesion, such as an abscess or a tumor or a hematoma, etc. It is usually subacute and maybe chronic. It is usually reversible with the treatment of the underlying etiology. And it occurs around a particular pathology. May that be a neoplastic process, primary or secondary, could be an infection or inflammatory process, or it could be hemorrhage. Again, you can see that it has a classic finger in gloves appearance, sparing the overlying cortex and involving purely white matter. It interdigitates itself into the white matter surrounding the, uh, the, uh, the, the gray matter and sparing the gray matter. As you can see here, there is a well-defined ring lesion. This could be an abscess and or uh, a, a necrotic metastasis. And you can see the surrounding edema that spares the gray matter and interdigitates itself like fingers in gloves with the mass effect on the adjacent brain parenchyma, the overlying society, and the nearby ventricular system. Another lesion showing the interdigitation of the edema into the, the uh, surrounding brain parenchyma with sparing of the gray white matter. It is low signal intensity on T1. It is non-enhancing, and it is high signal intensity on T2 with significant mass effect in this particular case. Obviously, edema does not usually enhance. If there is enhancement, it is usually enhancement of the underlying pathological lesion. The third type is the transependable edema, which is usually edema that occurs around or hypodensities on CT and high signal intensity on T2 and flare images that occurs around the ventricles, capping the frontal and the posterior uh, holes of the lateral ventricles in this. Uh, in these cases. And it is usually secondary to sudden and severe increase in the intracranial pressure. The uh, uh, explanation of such hypodensity, there are several theories. Uh, two most common theories is one is actually a leakage or seepage of the CSF through the endothelium of the uh, ventricular system into the adjacent brain parenchyma. So it's actually CSF leaking due to increased intraventricular pressure into the periventricular white matter. The other theory is that the normal interstitial fluid and lymphatic fluid that is draining from the brain parenchyma into the subependymal lining is interrupted and such fluid is not draining into the ventricular system because of the high pressure within the ventricle. So it accumulates around 
the edges of the vegetables. Either way, it gives the uh, appearance of low attenuation on uh, CT, low, attenu low signal intensity on T1 with high signal intensity on flare and T2 on MRI, and it is usually secondary to increase intracranial pressure. In this case, there's a BP shunt and possibly indicative of uh, shunt malfunction. In this case, there's hydrocephalus, and you can see there is periventricular low attenuation density indicative of increased intracranial entry, increased um, intraventricular pressure. The fourth and uh, final type is the hydrostatic edema, which is also extracellular. And this is actually due to capillary dilatation and increased transcapillary pressure resulting from uh, resulting into uh, transudate movement or fluid that is not protein bound moving from the intravascular space into the extravascular space. And it's usually occurring in cases of acute and severe arterial hypertension, such as eclampsia, preeclampsia, which results in press. Uh, disease, such as this case you see, it's a reversible subcortical edema that is occurring in the white matter. It also may occur in the gray matter, as it shows you in the uh, basal ganglia, in the thalami, and it's patchy bilateral in distribution. So it, both, it involves both white and gray matter. It is secondary to sudden and acute arterial hypertension. It may also involve the brain stem. And one of the hallmarks is that it is associated with generalized brain swelling as evidenced with the effacement of the overall sulci, the cortical sulci, compression of the major fissures and the ventricles, generalized slight reduction in the brain parenchymal density. So these are also again uh, transient and they are reversible with appropriate medical therapy. Um, uh, they do not leave any permanent scarring or damage to the brain parenchyma, and it is associated with generalized swelling of the brain parenchyma and diffuse mild reduction of the signal intensity with preservation of the gray-white matter differentiation. Um, these are basically the four different types of uh, brain edema. I hope I covered them and explained them with uh, easy to understand illustrations. And, uh, uh, I hope that uh, you go into more in-depth reading about these types as uh, identifying these lesions is determinative uh, sometimes to patients' life, uh, particularly if uh, patients are critical and are planned for lumbar puncture. In, uh, identifying increased intracranial pressure and the type of edema and the compartmental shift and the possibility of herniation is crucial uh, prior to uh, advocating or uh, not advocating uh, uh, performing an LP uh, lumbar puncture procedure on a patient. Thank you very much.